Hey folks, how's it going? So I am helping my design build fly team right now try to compute the thrust of one of their motors. And if you, uh, let me pull this down real quick. If you just go to say, you know, Horizon Hobby uh, or something like that, and I don't know, we can just click on here and go to shop, airplanes, and I want parts. And we do motors okay so if we just look at a motor and let's just click this motor right here and if we're lucky this motor will tell us um, what the thrust is and it's okay so there's the recommended flying weight but it doesn't actually tell us what the um, thrust is so it says recommended flying weight for a 3d flyer is 2950 grams six and a half pounds and for sport um, you can go up to 4,000. So what I'm guessing is, is for the 3D flyer, this is going to have a thrust to weight ratio of like 1.1. And for the sport flyer, this is probably going to have a thrust to weight ratio of like 0.8. Um, so if we, if we look at this real quick, so they're saying for the 3D flyer, you do, um, yeah, let's go down here. So if I say 0 0.8 times 4705, that's like 3,700. And if I do 2950 times 1.2, that's around the same. So I'm guessing that this motor has a thrust of around 3,500. Now it turns out that you can compute the thrust um, experimentally, right? You can buy this, connect the prop to it. It says what prop to use and hook it up to the... Um, you know the, the voltage of the battery and 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 and, and run it through and, and crank it out um but you'd have to buy it and what if what if for some reason for whatever reason it doesn't work the way you want um you could and i watched a youtube video on this apparently you can you know copy and paste this motor and say you know thrust test and you can click around and apparently you can kind of like look at uh, it looks like this one is on this website and maybe this says the thrust um, but yeah it doesn't it looks like uh, even on spec on the spectrum website it just it doesn't do it um, so anyway so the YouTube video I watched said that there were three ways to get thrust of a motor the first way was to just read the data sheet if you're lucky the second way was to triangulate so look at other motors that are around the same and then the third way was to crowdsource and find it well I'm gonna introduce you a fourth way and what you do, and I'm going to see if I can hold this up to the camera. I have this book, um, Principles of Helicopter Aerodynamics by Gordon Leishman. And in here are uh, two equations. And what the equations say are basically that the, the co coefficient of power is equal to the total power of the motor divided by the density times the area of the rotor omega cubed r cubed which is the radius of the uh, and I'll show this all in code in a second and then it also tells you that the coefficient of power is a function of the thrust coefficient and then you can use the thrust coefficient to get the thrust so um, if we type this in the coefficient of power is equal to the total power divided by the uh, density of air times the area of the rotor times the um, omega, and I'm going to say rat radians per second because I'm going to compute that later, cubed times r cubed, okay? So we need to fill all of this out if we want to list. So first, I'm going to do everything in SI units. So the density, this is the density of air. Um, the power, I'm going to go back to the motor. The power, according to this, is 900 watts. So I'm going to type in 900.0. Now, for whatever reason, and I think it has to do with induced power of the motor, you have to multiply by 1.5. Um, so that extra 1.5, I think, is for induced power, okay? Then you need uh, area. Well, let's get the radius. So the radius of the prop, that's a 12 inch prop. So I'm gonna say 12 and a half. So I'm gonna say 12.5. I'm gonna divide by 12 to get to feet and then divide by 3.28 to get to meters and then divide by two to get the uh, the radius of the prop because it's a 12 inch diameter prop and then uh, half of that would be the radius. So there's the radius. This is radius in meters for a 12.5 inch prop. Uh, then the area is just pi times pi r squared, right? And I have the numpy toolbox um, imported so I have pi there. 
And then omega, omega rad s is an interesting thing. You first have to compute the angular velocity in RPM. Well, the motor size is a 55, 50, sorry, 50, 55. So that's the size of the stator. And then it says 650 kV. So what you need to do is, is type in the kV of the motor. Now let's see, kV is 650. And you need to multiply the kV times the voltage in the battery. And so the voltage in the battery is, it says 18.5 to 22.2, so I'm gonna say 20.0 volts. By the way, there's gonna be a lot of errors in this code. This is just to get you a ballpark. This data sheet does tell you the size of the airplane that you should use, but a lot of different websites don't tell you that. So I'm just trying to give you an idea of, of how you can use these equations, because maybe you don't know. Um, anyway, so if you do the kV times the voltage in the battery, so this is uh, kV, which is basically uh, RPM per volt from the data sheet, right? And then this is the uh, voltage in the battery, right, in volts. This is the uh, angular velocity, angular velocity in RPM, okay? Then the omega rad s, oops, rad s, is omega in RPM, and then you have to do some dimensional analysis. So you have revs on top, so one rev is uh, two pi radians, right? And then you want, you have revs per minute, so you have minutes on top, one minute is 60 seconds. So you have to multiply that by 60, okay? And let's just make sure this is right, because I, I, I did that pretty quick. So omega in RPM is omega RPM, and then let's print the coefficient of power. CP is CP. All right, so let me make sure I have this right. So you have revs per minute. You want the revs to cancel. One, so I, yeah, so I did that wrong. And you want the revs to cancel. You want to multiply by two pi. And then you have per minute. So you want the minutes to cancel. So one minute is 60 seconds. So you times by two pi, divide by 60. Okay. Um, so let's run this, see what happens. Uh, it says CP is not defined. Okay, sure. Okay, so my coefficient of power is 0 0.0013, which makes sense. Um, then I look at this equation, and it says that the coefficient of thrust is the coefficient of power times the square root of 2. And then you have to take the entire thing and raise it to the 2 thirds power. And I'm doing 2.0 divided by 3.0 because at least in Python 2, if you did 2 divided by 3, you'd get 0 because it was an integer. Um, nowadays, I don't think you need to do that, but it's just a force of habit. Anyway, let me make sure that this thrust coefficient makes sense. So I get a thrust coefficient of like 0.015. That sounds about right. So then we can just compute our thrust. So thrust, according to a, this equation in here, 2.36 is 1 half times rho times the area times the omega rad s squared times the radius squared, and then I can just print, and this, we have to be careful, this is thrust in newtons. For whatever reason, the hobbyist community likes to report thrust in grams. So the thrust in um, newtons divided by gravity is kilograms. So the thrust in kilograms is the newtons over 9.81, because that's gravity. And then, so the thrust in g's is thrust in kilograms times 1,000. And so if I print the thrust in which is not really a force, it's it's just a weird unit. It's basically telling you like how much mass you can carry on Earth. That's essentially if you were flying straight up. Um, anyway, let's see if we get, oh boy. Uh, so I did something wrong here. Uh, buh, buh, buh. Let's see, R squared, let's make sure this is all right. Yeah, that's saying 231,000. Thrust in newtons, one half rho, a omega rad squared, r squared. Oh, whoops, I forgot to multiply by the coefficient of thrust. There we go, 3,604 grams, which, if you recall, is exactly what I thought we would get, right? So in the data sheet, you saw that for a sport, I was assuming a thrust to weight ratio of like 80%. And then for the 3D flyer, I was doing like 1.2. And so if you take those values, 1.2 and 0.8, you get around these, this number, which is a good ballpark. 
But my equations here, well, not my equations, obviously Leishman. Uh, again, I'll put the book up. So, principle of Heracleta aerodynamics by, by Leishman. Sorry, there you go. Um, it's a really good book. And uh, according to this equations, I predicted 3,604, which if we did 3,604 divided by the 2950, that would give you a thrust to weight ratio of 1.2. And then if you did the 3604 um, divided by 4705, you would get 0.75, which is, yeah, three quarters. That seems about right. Um, so, yeah, so I, I totally agree uh, with that assessment. I think if you put this motor with a 20 volt battery and a 12 and a half inch prop on a 3D flyer, you'd be good. And if you put it on a sport flyer, you'd also be good. So I hope you learned something from this video. Um, I've done this on three different motors and I've gotten the right answer. Again, you just need to add this 1.5 factor here, um, which I think is from the induced power of the motor. Um, I, I'm, I'm assuming that this max wattage that they're reporting is like electrical power or something like that and they're not including like the aerodynamic power which i think this book is including the uh the torque from the uh the the, the aerodynamic torque from the props so that's what i think uh that's why i think that's in there um, but like i said i've done this for three different motors and it's worked so i hope you enjoyed this video and i guess i will see you in the next one